connections at precisionconnectionsorder.com where the right connections are the only connections. So we have a dual voltage, high capacity power bank system, which consists of 23.7 volt batteries, which powers our five volt rail, as well as four 3.7 volt batteries, which power our 12 volt rails, which are in series. So I decided to redo the video and make it as simple as possible in order to, you know, keep everybody entertained and into what's going on. All right, so the top portion is wired in parallel, which means that every positive is on a single bus and every negative is on its own single bus and it's being fed into the inverter. And what the inverter does is it takes the 3.7 volts and it steps it up to five volts. Because if we take the voltage that's coming directly from the battery and try to run it straight into the device, it will not power up because it needs a minimum of five volts. So what the inverter does is it steps the voltage up. Just like the amplifier in your car, when you connect that amplifier to the 12 volt power supply coming from your battery, it actually steps that voltage up via a transformer or inductor to 150 or 35 volts to give you that power that you need. The bottom half now, I'm trying to achieve 12 volts. So what I need to do is run the batteries in series. So to make the numbers easy, 12 divided by four is three. Each battery is gonna supply three volts, goes into the other battery, which is gonna be six volts, goes to the other battery, it's gonna be nine, and then the last fourth battery is gonna give me my 12 volts. That's fine, I can do that. But the only problem I'm having is charging the unit. So to resolve the charging issue, I would have to get something called a BMS. And what a BMS does is it regulates the charge coming into each battery by monitoring at certain points how much charge each battery has in it to give it an efficient charge because you don't want to overcharge a lithium iron battery because it could blow up it could catch on fire as well as limit the amount of capacity that it has on the longevity of the battery so you definitely need that bms and that's that little module right there and that's going to regulate my charging voltage it's not going to affect my supply voltage my supply voltage is going to be connected directly out to the system or whatever device I'm, I'm powering up. Voltage that's coming in, it needs to be regulated. If you don't want to overcharge, you don't want to undercharge. So I was thinking maybe I should go with a two rail setup, maybe a five volts as well as a 12 volts on a single transformer or, or a power supply going into the system or have it built into the system. So I decided to get a five volt step up power supply, which is gonna give me 12 volts from the single 5 volts input. This way, I have to walk around with two power supplies, and in 2017, we have more access to a 5 volt USB cable opposed to a 12 volt cigarette lighter attachment. So I decided, to, well, let's go with that. So another obstacle that I would have to overcome is actually charging the 12 volt system. Being that I have a five volt USB cable coming in. I was thinking maybe I should just add a, another 12 volt cable coming in, but then I thought about it. Why well, have two voltage source coming into one unit? That's so 90s. So what I decided to do was install two step up inverters, which will take five volt in and give me 12 volts out in order to charge the 12 volt system. And the reason why I use two modules instead of one is because I found with one module, the temperature is slightly raised on the unit. So I figured, well, if I use two modules and I isolate them with a 25 volt by 6800 microfarad capacitor, I could stabilize the voltage. And what the capacitor actually does is, say for instance, if one module is at 11.1 volts, because we're never in a perfect world, and the other module is at 10.3 volts. You don't want the 11.1 volt feeding into the 10.3 volts because that's gonna cause the system to overheat and components to burn. So what the capacitor does is it takes the it takes the lower module voltage as well as the higher module voltage and creates a medium. 
so that the 12 volt BMS system could have an average voltage to draw current opposed to drawing current from either one higher module or one lower module. So in a good analogy, it's like you can get more water from drinking directly out of a bottle opposed to drinking water from the tap or a water fountain. As the water comes out of the water fountain, 100% of that water is not going into your mouth. It's spilling all over the place. But if you take a bottle and you fill the bottle up from the water fountain, you could actually get 100% of the water coming out of the tap into the bottle and you're drinking from the bottle. So that's a perfect analogy of how the capacitor setup works in this situation. So as you guys may already notice that the unit is currently charging an Apple device as well as an Android device. If you look on the side, there's a battery level meter on there. You just press that button in and it tells you the status of the battery. As well as all the way on the top, there's an LED white light that you can use as a flashlight. The battery capacity is real good compared to other systems out there. You got to remember that you have 20 batteries powering one or two devices. So that's 20 batteries working together in unison to keep your device charged. So the system is very robust, is very forgiving, meaning that if you forget to recharge the system, you'll have a day's worth of capacity until the next charge, which is good because on a normal power bank system, you'll charge it overnight, it will hold you down for the whole day, and then you'll forget to charge it the next day, and then you're walking around with an extra weight and a dead battery. This is the perfect power banking system that's out on the market today. It's the perfect size. It could be placed in any laptop bag. It could be placed in any book bag. It could be carried on the back with two straps on the side. It can also fit in most pocketbooks. It doesn't look geeky. It has a nice sleek appearance. It's nice and slim. It's very fashionable. It could add to your overall look. It has the perfect capacity. It's very forgiving. You don't have to charge it every night. You could run out and miss a charge and still have a full day's worth of charge. It's very light. It only weighs about 5.3 pounds, which is lighter than most of you guys' laptop. Everywhere I go, people are always asking me where could they buy this item. And I'm like, I make these. And you know, I give them the backstory behind it. Like when I'm working on cars, always in the need for power because you're on the road all day you're hopping from car to car place to place your battery capacity is going down being that all the devices are so small and for me to be running around with a big heavy lead acid battery which i did so i came up with this solution and i have to say the amount of space that i save as well as the weight that i reduce from my vehicle as well as my carry-on um, every day I may call it luggage is phenomenal because I could actually fit four remote start systems in the same space where I would have to but I used to have to fit my booster pack my lead acid booster pack and that's phenomenal I could actually have more items that I can make more money with in the space where the lead acid battery took up and as well as get more capacity than the heavy lead acid battery this portable power bank system is perfect for camping professional mobile use just something that you should always have in the back seat of your car hit me up subscribe to your channel precision connections